the program. We're glad you've stayed with us because this is Bottom Line Africa. Now, members of the newly elected East African Legislative Assembly converge in Uganda for their second session after being sworn in December. Now, the members drawn from uh, the six EAC member states are expected to debate a number of legislations, among them three key bills, the EAC Oaths Bill 2017, the EAC Statistics Bureau Bill 2017, and the EAC Monetary Institute Bill 2017. They are also expected to hold a plenary to establish and elect members to the six committees of the Assembly. Now, the session will be a test by members to overcome national interest and legislate on common issues affecting the community. Kenya's President Uru Kinata earlier last week called on Kenya's representative to Yala to, the champ to champion Kenya's interest and also promote integration. Uganda's President Yoweri Museveni is expected to integrate the session tomorrow. The East African community and I of course, we're going to bring you details of that sitting live right here on Bottom Line Africa. Now, let's begin our studio discussion tonight, which has everything to do with the future of the East African community. Of course, Yala, the East African Legislative Assembly, is just one branch of the ESC. Now, joining me in studio once again is Professor Maurice Samutabi, history scholar and lecturer. We also have John Gashie, who's a regional affairs analyst. Good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Good evening, Yusuf. Good evening. Thank you very much. Yes, Prof. Uh, let me begin with you. In the first two pillars of the integration process, or the integration project, apparently, is the customs union and, you know, something that keeps on uh, coming back. That is the uh, common market. And the third right. pillar is the monetary union. Before we even talk about, you know, the possibility of the East African community member states having some sort of uh, uh, the same currency, the first two pillars is something that has never been exhausted fully. Why do you think there's this delay? Uh, I thank you very much, Yusuf, for the question. I think we must begin to address the issue of the treaty of 1999 that brought together these uh, group of countries. Mm -hmm. The challenge, of course, has been that uh, we have very good documents. We sign them. Uh, after signing them, sometimes ratification becomes a problem. Yes. And I think I want to address the issue of the goodwill by mm -hmm. the leaders in the region. Uh, and I think uh, the collapse of the past ISA community was a... Uh, largely as a result of disagreement between Nyerere, Kenyatta, and uh, Idi Amin. Yes. And we are seeing tensions emerging in the region as a result of, I think, either leadership disagreements or sometimes uh, what one can call suspicion, suspicions. Mm -hmm. There's a certain, I think, a, a sense of uh, suspicion on the part of Kenya by Uganda and Tanzania, mm -hmm. suspicion by, by Tanzania on the part of Uganda, so, so that we, they look at each other with, with a lot of, I think, what one can call uh, 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 suspicious, I think, uh, uh, intentions. Mm -hmm. We know, for example, that we are supposed to have a railway line coming from Mombasa to Kampala all the way to Kigali in Rwanda. But you know what happened is that now that was truncated. Mm -hmm. Now that we are going to have now the project coming from Tanga to Uganda to, to, through Tanzania. Yes. So, so it tells you there's already suspicion on that. And I, and I want to go, come back to the question that you asked, uh, what happened in the first uh, two pillars? Mm -hmm. We know that the customs union is yet to come into fruition. Right now, this debate about the, uh, the monetary union coming into fruition, that can we have a common currency for the member states and so on. Mm -hmm. We know that this will actually make the region very strong if, you had, uh, if, you had, if you, uh, we get to get one currency, mm -hmm. like we see in the European Union. Yes. But, but the problem is that uh, the, suspicion, the suspicion that we see emerging, where Tanzanians and Ugandans begin to see Kenyans as, uh, as, as too ambitious, they look at Kenyans without of suspicion and so on. So, so we need to really address these issues in order for us to uh, develop a, a common well, union well, well for said. the region. Well said, Prof. And let me bring uh, Gashe into this conversation. And Gashe, of course, integration, of course, means, you know, opening up to each other, you know, people coming up, uh, you know, with their different ideas and everything. Why do you think mistrust, suspicion, I mean, reservations, why do you think they still have a place in, in the East African community? Because these are the same, same things that even that, that brought down the East African uh, community back in the 1977. Are you seeing some sort of history repeating itself again? I hope not, but I would say that um, in the uh, development of a regional cooperation, like as the professor said, the European Union, and a lot of other supranational entities, there are what we call um, uh, 
issues that have to be you know uh, smoothened off or issues that have to be addressed and i think it's more to do with the political acumen political commitment and of course uh, remember that uganda's uh, key interest is uganda kenya's mm -hmm. interest is kenya yes. remember tanzania's interest is tanzania the, the, look, the community is really when all the parties to the community feel that their interests are taken care of. Mm -hmm. And in this regard, then, the issue is really how to manage the expectations, how to manage, mediate, and also talk about the larger picture. And mm -hmm. it is, in my view, perhaps, it's, we haven't gotten to that level where we would say that the East African community is at the verge of uh, possibly having a repeat of the 1977 uh, issue. Mm -hmm. But we needed to really have more better uh, political management of the processes. And also we needed to be able to, what shall I say, uh, have a quid pro quo. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Mm -hmm. And in this regard, is a win-win situation for all uh, players in the yeah. region. Clearly, the situation at hand right now is not a win-win situation. But, Prof, do you think the issues you've already raised, you know, the mistrust, you know, the reservations among member states, what do you think needs to be done to make sure, you know, these member states polish out, iron out their issues, and at least give this community a chance? Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf, for that question. I think what needs to be done is to get rid of the mistrust and suspicion. Mm -hmm. And the first step to do this is to allow East Africans to mingle. Let them mingle uh, without requiring a passport. I don't require a passport to go to Tanzania, to go to Uganda, like is the case right now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to have a successful uh, union community, for example, in the European Union, once I get a visa to Britain, that visa allows me to go to uh, Italy, it allows me to go to Germany, it allows me to go to Denmark, yes. all those countries. So we need to have this uh, uh, idea of a passport for the region uh, removed so that we, when you have an ID card from Kenya, mm -hmm. you can travel the entire uh, East African region uh, without uh, border security stopping you because you are citizens of the community. Mm -hmm. There was one time the passport, the East African passport, Mm -hmm. well, well said. Now, uh, there's also one big issue that needs to be addressed, and that has everything to do with, with funding. Now, Gashir, as of November last year, that is just about two months ago, only Uganda have given most of its contribution to the ESC, uh, lagging behind, of course, uh, all the other countries. Burundi, up until now, I don't know if that has changed, they're yet to pay a single coin to the East African uh, community. Is this perhaps an indication that member states are losing interest? I... I, I, perhaps my view is, is that there are a lot of issues that need to be addressed, and mm -hmm. some of them are fairly immediate. The issue of the uh, uh, security and political interference, and also political, shall I say, expansion of various uh, leaders in the country. And mm -hmm. let's talk about Rwanda and Burundi in particular. There are issues there that need to be addressed. Those are more bilateral, but they affect the functioning of the larger uh, East African community. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, we have the issue, as it were, of South Sudan and its impact on uh, Uganda, Kenya, and indeed our other members of the uh, community. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have the issue of Tanzania then perhaps at, at, at one time being East African and another time perhaps hoping that it's part of the South African Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. And I think those are issues that needed to be resolved. And I, and I, and I am uh, of the view that possibly um, we shouldn't be uh, pessimistic. We should yes. be optimistic. Mm -hmm. And I think the political leadership within the region and indeed, as the professor is talking about, mm -hmm. the public diplomacy, mm -hmm. free movement of people, labor, and integration, those perhaps will bring in, create a more political affiliation. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding that we would have our, we will still have our own differences. Mm -hmm. The European community, as, as we all know, I mean, took about nearly 50 years to, 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 have, to have resolved that, despite there having been NATO, there having been uh, the European Union, and what have you. So uh, really, regionalization mm -hmm. takes quite a while, and it, yes. it, it takes the staying power. Mm -hmm. and, Do and, the political uh, leadership in the region have the staying power? Mm -hmm. That's an issue. But I think the people of the region, and in particular, 
Kenyans, Ugandans, and Tanzanian, we have an interesting history. Yes. And, and, and I think in, I, I, I'm still you know, optimistic and confident that uh, other than these short-term political issues, I think the community will grow. Mm -hmm. That's of course, my they, view. It's, it's important to remain optimistic. Now, now Prof, let's talk about uh, the East African Legislative Assembly. This is one of the you know, important arms of the East African community. They're going to have a sitting uh, tomorrow, apparently, in Kampala, Uganda. Kenya took a lot of time before ke we came up with a conclusive sort of a list. Like, but, but right now, at least uh, Kenya has a complete uh, number of representatives there. What do you expect of this uh, assembly this time round? I, I think, thank you, Yusuf. I think one of the a critical issues that I think the Assembly will be addressing, and I think with part of the region, mm -hmm. is the issue of currency. I think once the bill is passed, and we begin to think about a common currency of the region, we may have, I think, movement, through movement, like my friend Kashi has, has pointed out. Once you begin to see business people uh, uh, trading around peacefully, without mm -hmm. worrying about carrying different notes uh, between Busia, you know, uh, in Namanga, and so on, that we have one currency for the region, it will promote, I think, ease of movement of goods, and even services. And I think that's a major, major hindrance that you have today, that you have to trade with, with each other using a, a, a European currency, for example, the euro, or an American currency like the dollar. So mm -hmm. once we get the common uh, 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 currency, I think, in the region, uh, it might actually improve uh, trade. And I think the bill that is discussing, uh, which uh, like, like to pass, of course, uh, will actually enhance that. Mm -hmm. Plus, of course, other legislations. But I think what one wants to point out also is to allow these uh, members, these MPs, uh, to create rules and regulations that allow for a uh, breaking down of these walls uh, that you call boundaries, international boundaries, mm -hmm. and I think allow for free and easy movement of people, employment and so on. Today we are worried about Kenyans in Tanzania who are being asked now to produce uh, work permits and so on. Yes. Yet they didn't agree, I think, about three years ago that there should be no uh, permit required for residents in the region and so on. So mm -hmm. you need to break down all those elements in order to allow for free flow of people labor and so on and uh, speaking about you know barriers there's this issue that normally comes up in every summit in almost every meeting of the east africa legislative assembly that has everything to do with the non-tariff uh, barriers now prof as i'm going to en engage gashia shortly now prof can you perhaps uh tell us what needs to be done because it seems every time a barrier is removed another one pro uh, comes up I, I i agree with you absolutely yusuf and i think for example people selling maize across the border from mm -hmm. Kenya to Uganda or Tanzania to Kenya or moving beans and so on or just common goods that regular people use. Those should really not be subject to tariffs and so on. Mm -hmm. We need to uh, move beyond that and uh, put tariffs to goods that actually uh, matter, goods that can actually cause uh, what one can call a big ripple effect on the economy and so forth. Mm -hmm. We see, for example, uh, uh, misuse of these when uh, cars to Kenya are supposed to be eight years and newer but all the vehicles go to Uganda and they come back to Kenya, sold it to Kenya at a very, very exorbitant amount, yet they have come through the Kenyan port and all that. Mm -hmm. So we need to see tariffs that actually are friendly to all citizens in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Sudan, and so on. Mm -hmm. And by saying this, I mean, for example, that you don't have to get a, a, a tariff on a, a sack of beans being sold by a peasant <laughs> farmer from Mbali, Uganda, to Busia, for example, mm -hmm. or somebody selling a, a, a bag of, a, you know, of beans from Moshi, selling to a Kenyan across the border in Taveta or in Amanga. Mm -hmm. We really need to have that exchange uh, flourish, uh, expand, and so on, in order to begin to promote now bigger trade uh, and so on. And yes. one of the areas to begin with is to extrude some of those elements from the tariff barriers and so on, and begin to put tariffs on uh, high-value goods. For example, if somebody is importing a, a, a two, ten lorries of of sugar, then you talk, talk about tariffs. Mm -hmm. If somebody's importing a car, use high, high, high value items, then these are uh, uh, goods that are done by common people and so forth. Mm -hmm. Gashir, what is your expectations uh, from the East African Legislative Assembly? Apparently, they're going to have their sitting uh, tomorrow. This is an assembly that fell to agree, even you know, during the uh, election of the House Speaker with Burundi rejecting uh, the speaker that was elected. So do you foresee a situation where they, we might get some important legislations out of, out of the IALA? I expect so, but perhaps the first thing first is to smoothen the rough edges that have already taken place vis-a-vis uh, -vis the election of mm. the, the speaker and the other issues revolving around Rwanda, Burundi. And I, I am hoping and I'm very expectant that, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
larger a movement, political movement, will be placed on the Yala by their regional leaders to try and smoothen the more bilateral, you know, issues that seem to cloud and perhaps hamper the larger East African thing. Mm -hmm. But we must also be aware that the community has to try and mediate. As we said, we have the issue of South Sudan. We have the issue of Rwanda and Burundi. We have the issue of the, shall I say, so-called the coalition of the willing. Yes. And Tanzania feeling that perhaps its best interests are served elsewhere, so to speak in so many other areas. Mm -hmm. And then there are the issues of the custom union, there are the issues of free movement of people. But then this cannot be done within one sitting. And I think the most immediate one is to, shall I say, uh, get over the initial uh, issues of um, suspicion as they were, mm -hmm. and then get the IALA back to its normal issue of legislative uh, um, uh, you know, processes that are still behind uh, behind schedule. Mm -hmm. Of course, the debate between you know uh, Kenya and Tanzania relation and how uh, Tanzania continues to distance itself from ESC and perhaps the continued bromance with Sadek is something that is going to uh, start a right. whole new debate. Now, Prof. and Geshe, very briefly, what is your expectations or what is the future like of ESC? Do you expect you know ESC uh, to perhaps bring on board some other member countries? Yes, I think there is a potential for growth, and I know they've been talking to Ethiopia and other countries, DRC and so on. Mm -hmm. So there's a potential for growth, and I think the bigger it is, the better it will be in terms of uh, uh, making it possible for us to enjoy a bigger space and so on. Mm -hmm. And the tariff issue, I just wanted to repeat the issue of school fees, yes. uh, university fees. Uh, right now in the European Union, uh, if you are from the Union, European Union, you don't pay fees uh, that is charged to foreign students and so on. Mm -hmm. We'll expect also in this region that a student who attends Makere from Kenya or in Masa Dar es Salaam, or attending Lukenya or you know, Nairobi from Uganda and you're from Tanzania, mm -hmm. should, should pay the same fees. We should remove this element of that these are foreign students like the case around in Tanzania and pay the same fees across board in the universities, high school and so on. And I think these are social uh, facilities uh, should also spread to health, er, health care and so on. Yes. That uh, persons from Tanzania, Kenya and so on can uh, move across the border and be treated in the various hospitals mm -hmm. in those particular countries. And this will actually harmonize the issue of removal of tariffs as well as uh, trying to build a common, I think one can, uh, 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 a, a common market, mm -hmm. as well as a common wealth in terms of where everybody begins to benefit from the, uh, what the, the, the various member countries can provide. Precisely but I, I agree growth, with you, yes. there's, there's a future for growth, mm -hmm. and I think that growth will help actually the region. I think what you've said summed up, sum, summed up basically what integration is all about. Uh, Geshe? Yeah, I would only say that it's a long road to go, but I think it's, for me, I think the community is still, perhaps as it is constituted, far much stronger mm -hmm. politically, diplomatically, and economically than the earlier hitherto East African community that collapsed about two, you know, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, we also have to be aware that there, as the countries develop politically, economically, there is only one route. And that is really having a stronger regional entity. Mm -hmm. uh, unilateralism in this particular region, in terms of trade, in terms of security, in terms of education, would not really uh, you know, be an option. Now, how we manage those issues, how we bring in uh, what we call mutual benefit and appreciation that we are better and stronger when we are bigger mm -hmm. than perhaps then pursuing what we call very bilateral and unilateral issues, and possibly with the, the, the economic uh, integration of a, a, what, what you'd call a, a larger transport nodes, the mm -hmm. uh, railway lines, the you know, uh, trade and what have you, I think it's almost certain that uh, we are heading for a better time. But there will be some uh, rough edges, as we would say, some rough turbulence uh, along the way. Yes. But I don't think that the community, in my view, as of now, is uh, really uh, facing uh, eminent collapse of failure, no. Mm -hmm. We have a, a slight issues and I'm sure they can be overcome. Thank you very much. Of course, that is John Geshe, he is the Regional Affairs Analyst and we also had Professor Maurice Samutabi, who is a History Scholar and a Lecturer. Thank you very much for your input, gen gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Thank you. over to our images of the day. They come from Libreville, Gabon, where Joseph Araruya has made history by becoming the first Rwandan 
to win La Tropical Amisa Bongo. That is the biggest cycling race on the African tour, which concluded on Sunday. Now, the 21-year-old Ararui also becomes the first rider to hold both the tour de Rwanda and La Tropical title simultaneously. Now, the champion is now the most successful Rwandan cyclist in history of uh, UCA cycling uh, in the rest. Now, in November last year, Ararui became the third Rwandan to win Tour du Rwanda, the annual uh, Africa category 2.2 road race, since it became part of UCI Africa Tour in 2009 after uh, Valles Ndaisenga 2014 and in the year 2016, and Jean Bosco and Sengimana in the year 2015. Now, Gabonese President Ali Bongo Ondimba presented the awards at the end of the race. <laughs> Very interesting Lebanese proverb there on a Twitter. Uh, Paul Alia, we did ask you, does George Ware's ascension to the presidency in Liberia bear promise for the rest of Africa, for the rest of the continent? And 74% of you said yes, and just 26% of you said uh, no. And let me just go through some of your tweets here. Professor Olum Nelson says, yes, African countries should use Liberia as an example to deliver electoral justice in Africa. And uh, one more tweet here from Benson Mushiru says, because the elections were done very free and fair, even after defeat, Salif accepted and moved on. This should be a lesson. I don't think Salif contested in that election. And then uh, one more tweet here. Uh, yes, other African countries sh should use Liberia as an example to deliver electoral justice. There's another tweet from Olum Nelson. One final tweet. And uh, at Kijana Steven there, he says, yes, it does, especially to the progressing in establishment of a just electoral uh, system. Thank you very much for your feedback. Of course, this has been your favorite Pan-African show, Bottom Line Africa. And that brings us to the end of the program tonight. Many thanks for watching. Once again, remember, this program is aired every Monday to Thursday from 10 to 11 p.m. And tomorrow, we're going to have a very interesting guest in studio. We're going to have an exclusive interview with Winnie Bianjima. She's the executive director of Oxfam International. I'm sure it's an interview you don't want to miss. Until then, bye-bye and enjoy the rest of your evening.